Hey everyone, and welcome to Aldersgate Online. No matter where you're watching, we're so honored that you've decided to spend the next 40 minutes or so with us today. These next 40 minutes will consist of worship, teaching, and discussion questions at the end for some reflection. If you're new with us at church today, I especially want to welcome you to Aldersgate. We're so glad you're here. To celebrate, we'd love to pledge a $5 donation on your behalf toward an organization of your choice. Simply head to aldersgate.info and click on the connect card. From there, fill out the form, select the I'm new checkbox, and we'll send you an email asking which organization you wish us to donate to. If you've been impacted by one of our experiences, then please take a moment and share this on whatever platform you're on right now. Here at Aldersgate, we long to see as many people as possible impacted by this life-transforming message, and this is the easiest and most efficient way to spread the word about this awesome community of faith. If you'd like to partner with us in the work that we're doing here at Aldersgate, in Lubbock, and around the world, please head over to aldersgate.info, where there's an opportunity for you to become a regular giving partner. Everything we do here at Aldersgate is because of your generosity, and we just want to thank you in advance for helping us impact those around us. If you have any questions or want to get more connected, you can text us at the number on the screen or by visiting aldersgate.info. Thanks again for being with us today. It's time for our online experience to begin right now. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself. Unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing.
Well, thanks for joining us. Today is Mother's Day, and so we're celebrating moms, but not just moms, we celebrate uh, all women. And so to help do that today, I've got my favorite woman in the world with me. This is my wife, Amy, and she's gonna help me with the message today. We've been in this message series called, But Wait, There's More. And I think if anybody can relate to that phrase, it's probably moms, but wait, there's more. There's always something more, right? Well, it's so true. And as Ryan's been doing this sermon series about more, we have laughed about what that word, um, how it was used in our family. And so we've talked about how our son Blake um, did a lot of sign language for more. And as he got a little bit older, but still was um, a young toddler, he used to tell us, I love you. And I would say back to him, I love you more. Oh. Um, and so he wanted to kind of up that. And so he got to where he would respond and say, I love you the most and the more. And so that's what this sermon series has kind of been like for us. It's the most and the more. It's about the Holy Spirit. And I don't know about you, but I've learned a lot. It's stepped on my toes and it's really challenged me in a lot of ways. Yeah, I love that. And so speaking of challenging, uh, we're going to keep pushing deeper into it this week. And so I'm going to take us to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Uh, and in the English Standard Version, uh, Ephesians 4.30 says, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Now, as we've been talking and unpacking the relationship we have with the Holy Spirit, we've looked a lot at the Greek words because sometimes in Greek, the words just don't translate well into English or we have one word in English for lots of different words in Greek. And so in doing a deeper study on this word grieve, don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God. The Greek word for the grieve there is Grieve. There's, there's, it translates very well. The word is grieve. Don't grieve. So let me just give you a few other translations for the same scripture. It says uh, in the New Living Translation, do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. The Common English Bible says, do not make God's Spirit sad. And so literally Paul is saying here, don't make the Holy Spirit sad. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't, don't bring sorrow to, the God, to God's Holy Spirit. And so the question is naturally, well, how do we do that then? How do we grieve the Holy Spirit? If we're not supposed to do that, how do we do it? And the good thing is, if we keep reading Paul's uh, thinking here in uh, the letter to the Ephesians, he, he kind of lets us know how we grieve the Holy Spirit. In fact, if I keep reading in Ephesians 4.31, it says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. So those things, bitterness, wrath, anger, those are, those are ways we grieve the Holy Spirit. Verse 32, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another. So if I'm not kind, if I'm not tenderhearted, if I'm not forgiving, then, then I'm grieving the Holy Spirit. He goes on in chapter 5, he talks about sexual immorality, talks about uh, foolish talk or, or jokes that are crude or, or words that we shouldn't be using. He talks about all of these things in Ephesians 4 and 5, and these are the ways that we grieve the Holy Spirit. So, well, and bless your heart, because when we look at this list, I think, oh gosh, Smalls, you've, you've not been able to get that list done. You've got a little bit of work today, right? <laughs> Actually, and Ryan knows I'm I'm kidding. Um, Not kidding. That's no, true. I am kidding. Um, but I've actually really struggled. I've, I've struggled with this whole, um, quite honestly, this whole message, um, because I don't think I've ever thought about how I grieve the Holy Spirit and what my actions do to grieve the Holy Spirit. And so as I've struggled, even giving this and thinking about Goodness, I'm looking at this list of things and I know I've fallen short and I know I'm going to fall short again. And so, you know, I don't know if you've ever felt like that in your walk where you just think, well, I'm just going to give up. I'm just going to try to do the best I can and it's never going to be enough. And that's just the way my life is going to feel like. And I know that is not of the Lord. That is not from Him. And He um, wants to give us more. And so that that I'm missing it if that's going to be my mentality. And so I'm going to take us back up. I'm going to take us back up to Ephesians 4. And I want to look at verses 22 and 23, because I think this gives us a little bit of a picture of a different way to think about things. And it says, put off your old self. That's if I'm thinking about this list, I'm trying to do it in my own power. It's my old self. I'm trying to get these things done. I'm never going to be able to get all that done and do it right. So put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self 
created after the likeness of God and true righteousness and holiness. And that's one of the keys of being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's taking that old self and putting it off and getting that new self. And so how do we get this new self? Ryan talked last week about being filled with the Holy Spirit, letting Him fill us up and us having access to Him, His power, His character. And I thought if I'm accessing those things, then my life naturally will reflect the things in this passage, which are good things, to be kind, um, to not let bitterness to take root. All of those things that Ryan's talking about, ways we grieve the Holy Spirit, my life will reflect a relationship with Him, but I've got to be able to connect with Him. So I'm talking about a relationship. It's all about the relationship. It's not a list of rules. It's not a list or some boxes to be checked but it's about truly having a genuine, real relationship with the Holy Spirit and to have access to that power. Mm. And so, oh, go, go, no, ahead. go ahead. I'm thinking about for women, um, we're really bad about focusing on those boxes to be checked off. We get into comparisons. We play the comparison game. So we're comparing um, my role as a mom to someone else's role as a mom. And how many boxes am I checking off? Am I always kind to my kids? Am I always patient? You know, thinking about all of those things. And I'm comparing myself to someone else. And unfortunately, a lot of times for me, that begins to dictate my identity. I let that kind of take on who I am. And so sometimes I feel like a failure because maybe this person over here looks so perfect um, as a wife or as a mom or as a coworker when I'm struggling. And I was thinking about a story um, uh, with Blake again. I'm, I'm kind of telling on Blake, um, but when he was about to, um, he had a really good buddy named Myla. She was a uh, these were friends of ours. She was born about a week before Blake. And so we had play dates once a week with our friend Myla. And so one day when they were over at, at our house, I was um, keeping, keeping Myla. Um, we were eating lunch. We were having spaghetti. We were eating lunch. And Blake begins to count out loud. And um, Blake at that time was still a little bit uh, verbally delayed. We did a lot of sign language like for more. And so I knew that he was counting out loud. But I don't know that anyone else, except maybe you would have known that that's what he was saying. So he's counting one, two, three, so he counts. And I will never forget this, but Myla looks up from her spaghetti and this is what she said. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. And I freaked out. And I thought to myself, oh my goodness, what kind of mother am I? I haven't taught my kid Spanish yet? He's not counting to 10 in Spanish and he's two. What kind of mother am I? And so I know maybe especially for women that we get into this where we, we do a lot of comparing um, and that begins to take on an identity and I, that is not of the Lord. And what the Lord tells us, if we put that old self off and we allow him in to create new inside of us, it's through that relationship that my life lived out is going to be those things on that list. Just naturally, I'm going to be kind. Naturally, I'm not going to allow bitterness to take root. I'm going to be forgiving. And so with relationship being the key, um, I'm going to say something. You and I have kind of worked through this, this statement and this idea to kind of camp on, but it's about being intentional. It's about me making a decision. I want to connect. I want the new self. I want him inside where I can access the power of the Holy Spirit. So if I'm not being intentional, if I'm, if I'm not doing those things, if I'm not being intentional in my relationship with the Holy Spirit, I'm unintentionally, right, grieving him. If I'm not intentional about connecting with the Holy Spirit, about my relationship with the Holy Spirit, then I'm unintentionally going to grieve Him. Mm. Uh, so, see, this is why I brought her along today on Mother's Day, but really any day because it's so good. So, yeah, so you're saying it's not so much about religion, but relationship. And mm -hmm. we often look at grieving the Holy Spirit in terms of what am I not able to do? What am I not doing? And I think what you're saying is it's more just grieving the Holy Spirit is not being intentional in our relationship yeah. with the Holy Spirit. So I guess the next question then is how, how do we become intentional in our relationship with the Holy Spirit? Um, because I think it's real easy to default to those rules, even in our relationship with the Holy Spirit. So we often talk about, well, you, 
you need to read the Bible every day. You need to pray every day. You need to fast occasionally. You need, you know, all of these these rules. And I don't necessarily think any of those things are wrong or bad. But do you also think, as a just as a woman or as a mom, <laughs> as one of God's children, that sometimes we can try to make those things religious as well? Like, sure. And and so, I think we're really good about teaching and preaching that we have to practice our faith and that's how we practice our faith and really you could say the same thing as you know growing in our relationship with the holy spirit we have to practice that or grow but what if we flipped that just a little bit and talked about faithing our practices instead of practicing our faith what if we faithed our practices and what i mean by that is what if we took the things that we do every day on a normal day and looked at those things as ways to be intentional in our relationship with the Holy Spirit versus trying to tack on 30 minutes at the beginning of the end of the day. But, but what if we looked at that? So what, what would that look like for you? What, what would that look like if you were trying to be intentional throughout your day of cultivating that relationship with the Holy Spirit? And so to me, what you're saying is I'm not going to compartmentalize this. That's right. So I'm not going to say, okay, I'm going to check this box. I did 10 minutes as quick as I could and read and prayed as I was going out the door. So now I can just live the rest of my day and put this to the side. So to me, you're saying this is part of everything I do. So this can be as simple as, and we've talked about this, but sometimes it's when I see an ambulance or a, a police car um, going by me, I wanna make sure that I'm praying for that. I'm connecting and praying, connecting with the Holy Spirit and just praying for those people as they're headed to an emergency. Um, this could be like uh, our boys picked out some scriptures and we put them on the mirror when they were younger, when they lived with us, um, one still does, but we put them on the mirror and we would kind of talk about those scriptures and what it meant to them. Um, yeah, they, were, they were real life scriptures for them. So Blake, our oldest one at the time was struggling with a, a heart condition. And so yeah. I think you and him found a scripture out of Ezekiel that talks about God giving us a new heart. Um, and Jeb had some fears early on in his life. Mm -hmm. I remember one of those fears was fears of tornadoes. tornadoes. That's actually a good thing to be scared, scared of. And um, so that kind of led to a, pro a proverb uh, about trusting in God, Proverbs 3, 5, trusting in God with all of his heart. And I remember you would, uh, during our prayer time with him at night, you would lead them through that. But also I remember that you put those verses up on the mirror in their bathroom. Mm -hmm. uh, and the point was anytime they would go into the bathroom to use the sink, brush their teeth or whatever. So um, we wanted them to read the scripture. Yeah, that's right. So let's, let's be honest and brushing their teeth. That didn't happen every day, but we, oh gosh, that's they're so boys. True. We tried. <laughs> and, uh, but they would see it often. Mm -hmm. And that was a way to help them cultivate that relationship and really let that sink into them. You know, it was so cool because um, even Jeb, it started out as being a scripture about tornadoes, but later on, years later, um, as unfortunately he had several surgeries, lots of injuries and different things that complicated his world, that scripture held so so many truths for him. And so it was so great how we could see, we could apply these scriptures over and over in different scenarios and we would talk about them, we would pray through them. So it was just natural conversations based on whatever was happening at the time. Hmm. I, I think there are so many ways to faith our practices. Just think about the time you spend in the car during the day and how you could use that as a time to uh, worship with music or uh, listen to a, a teaching podcast or... Um, You're walking. I, I like to walk. That's, that's what I do for exercise now. And when I do that, I just put my AirPods in and I'm listening to podcasts or music and, and using that time as prayer time. So I'm getting my exercise plus getting to cultivate that relationship. Um, the cleaning the house, doing dishes. I, I, I remember uh, a famous um, monk who wrote a book called Practicing the Presence of God. And he talked about even in doing the dishes, he found a way to find the presence of God. And I, I think that's what we're talking about here is, and I think the real bottom line is, is I love how you shine some light on this for us, is that we often think bringing grief or sorrow to the Holy Spirit is, well, I didn't do this, or I'm never going to measure up here. And we compare ourselves and all those kind of things. But I really love what you're honing in on, and the fact is we grieve the Holy Spirit when we're not intentional in our relationship with the Holy Spirit and growing in our relationship with the Holy Spirit. Here, here's what I would challenge you to do this week. You, don't pick 10 things and try to faith your practice in those 10 things, okay? Because then that's just another challenge of all these rules I've got to keep up with, right? Yeah, so yeah. 
just just pick one thing this week that you're doing every day every day it was work driving shower showering showering is where do some of my best thinking it's so it true. really is like i get out of the shower and i'm like We've joked, like in the shower, I'm going to have to get one of those right and white boards because that's where I get my thoughts. God speaks to me in the shower. It's crazy, but that's just, and that's something that, thank goodness, I do every day, at least once a he day. Does. So um, what what's that something during your day, just one thing right now that you could take and you could use that as a way to be intentional in your relationship with the Holy Spirit and grow in, in relationship. With the, and I love what you said earlier, and I, I want to emphasize this again. If we focus on growing in our relationship with the Holy Spirit, if we're intentional on growing in our relationship with the Holy Spirit, then all of these other things just kind of take care of themselves. Yeah. I'm reminded of what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount. He said, seek first the kingdom of God, and then all of these things will be added unto you. So like, just if we focus on cultivating that relationship, then all of these other things just kind of take care of themselves instead of us focusing on them. This also reminds me, um, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit. Last week we talked about some about Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 when the Holy Spirit came. I, I want to show you something that I, that I found this week that was very interesting. So Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 6, that Jesus appeared to more than 500 at, before he ascended back into heaven. So we know that after he was crucified, rose from the dead, he spent 40 days on this earth before Pentecost came, 50 days. So he, he, so, he showed up to 500 at least. But in Acts chapter 1, verse 15, Luke tells us that there were only 120 at Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came. So what happened to the other 380? Yeah. Jesus told them all to wait for the Holy Spirit. But now there's only 150 or 120 as opposed to 500 or more than 500. Where did they go? Well, I have to suppose, number one, they just got tired of waiting. They only had to wait 10 more days, but they just got tired of waiting. And I think that's what you're saying here is that sometimes cultivating a relationship with the Holy Spirit doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. And these things in our lives aren't going to disappear overnight. It takes time and we have to wait in that process of the things that God is doing in us. But the other thing I have to think is that maybe they didn't necessarily get tired of waiting. Maybe they just said, we're going to do this in our own way, in our own power. And I think that's what you're talking about with comparison and how those things come in is that sometimes we just try to do things in our own power and in our own way. And I think the word that we would leave you with today is wait on the Holy Spirit. Lean into that relationship with the Holy Spirit every single day. Be intentional about that relationship. Pick one thing this week and see what God begins to do. I love it. Can you pray for us? Yes. God, we just, um, we do just want more of you, the most and the more. And God, I just ask that um, you be with each and every person that's hearing these words and that as we begin to just seek you and what it means to allow you to just uh, create that new inside of us, that we can take on more of your characteristics, that our life just naturally would overflow with the things in these passages, being kind, forgiving, not letting bitterness take root, all of those things. Father, we want more of you. We want access to you. And so I pray that this week you would give us something that we could do, that we're doing every day, and that we could do that and connect with you during that, that you would be able to speak to us and, and grow us closer to you. And we ask all this in your name, Jesus.